I'm joined now by Paul Staines, one of the editors at the right-wing political blog Guido Fawkes. He started off that million-name petition, you may recall, to keep Clarkson at the BBC, which was delivered in rather spectacular style by Tank to Broadcasting House. I remember seeing it outside. Uh, Paul, what do you make of this decision? Well, I think it's a question of proportionality here. I mean, there's no doubt that Jeremy was out of order, should have been punished. But, you know, if you have an office Christmas party that has a bit of a punch-up afterwards, you don't close the factory down which is effectively what you're doing. It looks likely that the team, Hammond and May, will go with him elsewhere. A Sydney broking firm this morning put out a buy note on ITV shares saying if he goes over there, it'll be worth a billion to them. But this was a principle, wasn't it? This shouldn't have ever have been about commercial revenue. It should have been about bad behaviour, inappropriate behaviour that had somebody ending up visiting A&E being punished in a suitable way. There was a visit to a &E and it was for a split lip. So let's keep a sense of proportionality. I think in those circumstances, Jeremy should have been punished. When Premier League footballers, who are paid about the same as Jeremy Clarkson, do something wrong, the manager finds them month's wages or half a million pounds or whatever. That would have been an appropriate response. Or, alternatively, if it's so serious as people were making out at the BBC in the executive suites, perhaps you should have handed it over to the police and let them deal with it. This issue, though, of... of alternative punishments, doesn't that risk looking like it's one rule for one person and another for another, in the sense that if you or I did something like that, we can't be fined half a million quid or something? We don't well, have it. It might, hits different people you might differently. Remember, you might remember someone called Mark Thompson. He bit a producer when he was on the 9 o'clock news. He ended up being the director general of the BBC. So it seems to me there's one rule for some and another rule for others. It's clearly and widely known that Danny Cohen can't stand Jeremy Clarkson at all. They've been at odds. You know, A. E. Gill wrote in the Sunday Times the week before last that Jeremy felt he was under siege and that he was in enemy territory. It's clear that some people at the BBC were dying to get rid of Jeremy. He stands for things that the BBC can't stand, you know, car driving, smoking, drinking, well, blokishness. The, 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 the Director General made the point very clearly to say we are, uh, we are, have a broad church, people are welcome to have irreverent views, they're not welcome to behave badly. Nobody believes that. OK. Paul Staines, thanks very much for coming in to speak to us. Thank you.